I wanted to be a, a major league as well and be a baseball type trainer, but I, I'd uh, try to see other sports, football, soccer. You see all the injuries that, that happen in those particular sports. So when that should happen in baseball, not the only basically just the shoulder and elbow. You know about ACL, you know, um, ankle sprains, and so on and so forth. Work hard, make yourself available. Here's Zito. On the screen out there, he's talking to you. It's got to be Zito. I got to start out really low. You can tell by his hat. Basically, you your news and cultural things. So you start low, you work for free. I just saw Bogey just went back there. Oh, okay. He's coming out. I know, he just went back there. His level is just like the players. The players are at the minor league and they grind it up. He's standing behind the thing. So when you start on your I haven't seen Crawford or Romo yet, though. Almost his same path as a ball player? I would argue that team get that opportunity to be in the A-ball training is hard. So sometimes we have a rookie league, we have uh, interns that volunteer for free, and they just, they, just, they just show up. And honestly, in order to be looked at or to be noticed, you, you just got to be around. And not everybody wants to work for free, not everybody, everybody wants to be paid, but it's just like a baseball player. You know, most of them are like, hey, you're going to sign me up, I'll play the coach. So, I think, unless yeah. They rate this race. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you do have to definitely pay your dues and you want to you know, live through those tough conditions that I talked about. Standing in one spot for a long time sucks. Um, Doesn't it? Like the parade, huh? At least it's not as bad as the parade. We can move around. So worth it, though. Oh, so worth it. So worth it getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Especially with 20,000 people on the TV.
Yes, the, the reason we talk about maturity is because there's issues with the way the skeleton is, and there's growth plates and they close at a certain age, and then there's less risk after that happens. Um, but um, it's just, it is maturity, it's also mechanics, and it's in. structure, everything's built a little differently. So some people don't tolerate that. Roll 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 yeah, Roman 7 can you hear everybody? Oh, yeah. He's shaking everybody's hand. Oh, I see him. I see him. Huh? I said I see him. Okay. I'm sure you can see him. Does anyone have one question? Yeah, with white sunglasses. No, we don't. We want to see I'm sorry. We don't Don't mean to be rude. You will see the I told you. Last chance. Oh, uh, I think it's going to be a good one. Romo? Oh, boy. I have to go with a question and get a Romo. There he goes. He's amazing, though, right? That's the other thing. I shook Hunter Pence's hand in the dugout. I shook Hunter Pence's hand in the dugout. It's actually pretty easy to do it. I did. It was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, when we did the tour through the dugout, he came walking down and so did Vogel song. Yeah, I've been here that sometimes. Yeah, our hope is that you close. I've never been to him. It was awesome. Thanks. Did you get a last year? That's where we saw him. probably ask him when he started doing this slide. Did he let you stay there for a long time? Yeah. That's why you were in there for like two days. I hope he was mature enough to observe at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might blow my theory of maturity right there. All right. Did he hear it? Did he hear that? Holy oh, not good. Is he really? Let me check real quick.
said, yeah, I'm in, and uh, hopefully, you know, me and Sergio and Pablo and another team can make it here, and you guys will see us in March. Yeah. So what about the four kids? That would be pretty cool. Yeah. It's dead. <laughs> Actually, the plan. Okay. I think that's the plan every time you guys go out there. Well, let's just talk real quick before we get the microphones out there. Uh, you two individually played such a gigantic role in last year's World Series Cup for the Giants. Uh, now, obviously, we know the big things you guys did, but having a chance to now reflect, now that we're a few months away from it, are there any Whoa. moments that stand out in your heads that you've been flashing back to? Maybe when you're just brushing What am I missing, Robin? You know, Why do I need to look that way? Flash back to your I want them to look this oh. way. No, um, the one thing What's a lot of people ask me about is the Miguel Cabrera bat with the bases loaded. And as cool as that was, that's not even the thing that stands out most to me. It was, you know, game six and seven here in the NLCS. It was just uh, an amazing two days for, for our team, for the city. Uh, you guys are great as always. You know, and then you kept that off with the rainstorm we had tonight. Uh, those two days were, uh, you know, I've thought a lot about those and, and over the past couple months, and, and it makes me smile every time I think about it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the funny moment uh, for me personally is pretty much when we clinched uh, the West Division. The looks and the smiles that our teammates had on their faces the, the sheer emotion and the district euphoria that was all about it. Uh, I mean, no, I didn't bring it. I didn't need it. You know, that was a part of something special going to the playoffs and already doing the things as a team that no one really gave us credit for being able to do to literally just get to the playoffs. So, um, I think for me, that's when it kind of started, like, man, this is, this is really special, like, we can really do something. Um, and then, obviously, the other clinchers, I mean, those are the four most gratifying moments of my career. It's also kind of as my debut, so, uh, I mean, just, just to be a part of it, be a part of it, contribute to uh, that happiness, those smiles, and I mean, not just for us, but for everybody else as well. I mean, just to see the San Francisco has been amazing to me since I've been here, so. in the NLCS, which, I mean, all of us watching, it was literally like a movie, right? What are the chances that it's going to be at AT&T in the pouring rain? I mean, you don't play baseball in the pouring rain. And I remember being at home and thinking to myself, uh, as soon as you guys won that game, I talked to myself, they're winning the World Series. They're pouring yeah. 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 those thoughts go through your head that night? Yeah, because I mean, everybody yeah. probably knows now that I'm, I'm a believer. And, uh, you know, it says in the Bible I love many him. times that, that God doesn't bring you that far to let you down. And at that point in time, I felt like he had brought us that far, he wasn't going to let us down. And I just felt bad for Detroit because they didn't know what was going to I mean, just the rain, it was very fitting that, you know, no one really spoke about the trade that we got to get a scooter up, you know, they spoke about other teams making their moves and other guys that we were able to acquire in their pants going up. So, uh, a true professional, that's a blockbuster guy, he gets the last out, they hit that game himself, the last out in the pouring rain, and to see the way uh, we were all able to give each other this gift, you know, that, that, that feeling that Man, we've already accomplished so much, but why look back now? Uh, he said, well, Detroit has no idea what was coming their way. They were favored, heavily favored against us, so uh, I just kind of them out. Yeah, that sweep was pretty awesome. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, all right, have you guys ask the question? Let's do it again. Cool, let's start over here. Uh, I want to say that, like, even though I don't know you guys, like, personally, you guys are like the homies. <laughs> Uh, and Sergio, you like took the time to sign all these uh, cards and hand them out, and that's what's up. And, uh, in, the, in the World Series DVD, at the end, there's this Tyler Pence impression thing, and Logie, you're on it, but Sergio, you're not. So can you give us your best Oh, you! Yeah. Oh, yeah! yeah. 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 yeah.
going to do this, you have to stand up. Let's go, guys. I love you guys. Another day with you guys. It's all I want. I just want to be here and play next to you. You, 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 and you. Play for the guy next to you. I'm telling you, I'm not ready to go home. I love you guys. <laughs> Ryan Vogelsong loves hockey. The story is inspirational, like Rocky. <laughs> Ryan, who are your favorite flyers and sharks? Uh, I must say, I have not seen one hockey game this year. And that's not my fault. It's scary, Ben. So, we, uh, we'll just say, yeah, good, good question, and we'll live with that. <laughs> do you have a favorite player growing up, or do you have a favorite player of all time, or anything? You know, when I, the Flyers, it was uh, Ron Hextall. He was the goalie. I liked him. Um, Bobby Clark, he's a little bit before my time, but I mean, that man was a stud. So, uh, yeah, I, I do like hockey. I enjoy watching hockey, uh, more so live than on TV. But um, I do like to see the Sharks win, though. I do check the scores. Not really who's scoring the goals or anything, but I do check to see if they're the team. Pretty good. Clothing people out. True. Okay, do we have a question? Right there, go ahead. Hi, my name is Erica from San Jose. And I just want to say you guys are awesome. I love you guys. Yeah. Our question is for Sergio. Um, can we expect more Romo bombs this year? <laughs> <laughs> can you Romo bomb me? <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Free champagne? All right, question back here? Yeah, go ahead. All right, so this is for both of you. Sterling. Uh, obviously both being pitchers. Sterling and Robert. Are particular hitters that you either look forward to or dread facing? Both are friends. <laughs> I think every single hitter I dread facing. <laughs> uh, there's one thing that I've found learning, uh, especially since I got professional baseball, is everybody with a bat is dangerous. Everybody can hurt you in the swing. Doesn't matter talent, uh, their ability to actually hit or their stat line or anything. I mean, Bogey's a good example of that he, he hits really, really well, but he's a pitcher, and I'm gonna give him credit for that. So, uh, I mean, he's giving hits. Everybody with a bat, uh, in any early moment, I mean, they can change the outcome of the game, but it doesn't matter the name, it doesn't matter the, uh, I guess, I don't know, how awesome they are. I think, I think the, what Rome's trying to say, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, is you respect everyone and fear no one. I mean, that's really how you approach it. And you can see that when he's pitching in, you know, he's, there's a respect there, but he's not scared of anyone. And, uh, I'm sure the hitter would probably say that about the pitchers too, but I mean, that's really the mindset you have to have at this level. If you're scared to be out there, you're not going to succeed. Do you guys, I know some pitchers watch tape on this. Do you guys watch tape? I watch a lot of tape. Um, especially uh, guys that I feel like pitch similar to me, especially if they just face that team. Um, that's how I do a lot of my scouting. I, I pretty much remember what I did against uh, teams, especially in our division. Uh, so I want to see what someone else is doing because sometimes, you know, we have a very good scouting department and we have Rags does a great job for our staff of, of going over video of their leaders. But um, sometimes it's just good to see what other teams think they need to do to get someone else. So I watch uh, people that are similar to you. Uh, I don't watch as much film as this guy does. Uh, well, that's because you're sliders, man. I, I, uh, uh, I kind of have my own style, and I don't really go with that. I know what I know, and I know what I offer. Uh, and that just kind of sticks in my head. Uh, I can't have a fastball. And slider, it is what it is. It's a little bit. He said, well, we remember, you literally remember what you do against those guys. So, uh, that gets each hit. It's funny how as soon as they're walking from the it's like, okay, oh, that's not like I'm going to miss this, 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 this. And for me, it's usually, it's like out of my side. Got to my side. It's like, oh, my Long question and answer. Like I struggled away, or this guy's aggressive early or not, and I, I definitely trust that and rely on him a lot more than uh, Sterling and Robert. So uh, when it comes to film and stuff, I'd rather watch that too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm getting back to your slide. The trainers wanted to ask me because we were trying to advise young know, pitchers when to start throwing, you know, those intense pitches on their arms. So what do you start throwing? Uh, I was real fortunate. My dad was kind of strict on me and monitored my pitching a whole lot. Uh, uh, he didn't let me start throwing breaking balls so I was 13 years old until I got to the bigger field. Uh, he said that's a time where my body definitely becomes to mature a lot more than you grow up. <laughs> <laughs> You're more developed and you're more able to handle that kind of stress. Uh, and I think it's kind of it's kind of helped me like maintain myself up to this point. I do see a lot of younger kids on the right you know, eight, nine, ten years old. And I never got a chance to do that, but I understand now why. Uh, so I would assume you're right around 13 or you get to the bigger field. You get to the field where you know, you got to actually try and you got to be stronger about it and you're more developed for it. So I'd say right around 13 years old. Ryan, would you like to win? Uh, that's up to you. Go ahead. Uh, I, I mean, I, I played shortstop until high school, so I didn't even care about throwing breaking balls or anything like that until, you know, sophomore, junior high school. So it's that like 15, 16. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit later than senior. Yeah.
Let's go again. Oh, Ryan Vogelsong, you are an inspiration to me and I'm sure to everyone in this room. Yeah. And I just want to know how you remain so calm, cool, and collected beside your enchiladas <laughs> for every game. You just are so cool and calm. How do you, how do you remain so calm? Or as we like to say in the morning, Joe, pissed off for greatness. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, thank you very much for that. Um, I think I just, I lean on my focus, really. I didn't want to get in the way of the connection. I lean on my concentration. Um, because, like Sergio just said about his pitching, I know who I am, and I know what I'm about. I, I know that I don't have... Well, where did we get your jersey back? ...and Timmy and Bum. But I, but I feel like I can now hey, concentrate you got your else. Right? I feel like when I step on the mound that day, there will be no one in the stadium more focused on winning than me. And that takes me to the next level, I think. So... Yeah. Hi, this is Justin Romo. Um, basically, I was wondering what made you go to fastball and we got prepared to strike them out. Woo! Yeah! Think I'm the only one in the world that wanted to throw a fastball. <laughs> <laughs> I even shook off bus for to get to it. Uh, I think at that moment, two bus from now, we're the only ones in the whole world who wants to do that. <laughs> uh, to be honest, it was more just good feeling. Uh, I don't know if you guys know the story. You kind of called me out in game one of the World Series, so you were ready for the slide. I've never faced you before. I know you're ready for it. I know you're arguably the best hitter in the game, but uh, I'm a little sense of respect for your idea. You know? uh, and that's why when I went out of the game, I was saying I threw five straight sliders. I tried to make them my best slide in the whole season. Uh, <laughs> He hadn't really seen anything else they had to offer, and I think you know, he's such a good hitter, and he knows how to adjust from pitch to pitch. And, uh, I don't know, it's more of a good feeling. You know, about the ball back, and for that last pitch before that, he had to the slider up. Buster threw the ball back, and kind of went back to the middle, and got a little faster. I don't know, I don't want to say it was ballsy, I just it was smart. <laughs>